Hey guys, just a quick one, but it's something I thought you might be interested to know about. If you follow my channel regularly, you'll know that I recently got this new power supply. Uh, well, I say new. <laughs> Last, last inspection 1993, so it's pretty old. Um, but this is a uh, power supply that has three outputs. It has outputs one and two, which are a bipolar output, giving you plus minus five to 17 volts with one amp. And then it has a third output over here, which is four to six volts at four amps. But the one we're gonna be focusing on today is the bipolar output, which we've got set to plus minus 15, although I could bump up to 17, I suppose. But um, yeah, plus minus 17 ish volts uh, at the moment on this one, to bear that in mind and what we have here is we have a Korean output section now this is one of the boards that splits physically in half which is pretty cool but you can do this on boards that don't split in half as well uh, it's just easier on the bench here um, so what I wanted to do is I just wanted to check the output section was all working before giving it high voltage rails now you know that powering these things up when you've just fitted MOSFETs or drivers or anything new with the high voltage rails from the 12 volt battery supply or power supply can be a bit daunting and a bit like nerve wracking because if anything goes wrong there's incredibly high voltage high current there uh, rating, waiting to kill your new parts and blow up and cause loads of sparks and smoke in your face which is not ideal so because because I got this new power supply, I thought to myself, hang on a minute, hmm, I'm pretty sure I can actually just get this output section up and running using just the plus minus 17 volts, which is what I've done here. I have one MOSFET per bank. This uh, output section consists of four separate amplifiers that are all parallel together after the inductor. So what we have here is we have uh, low side, high side, low side, high side, low side, high side, low side, high side. So we have four separate amplifiers all paralleling together. and simply by feeding this output section with plus minus 17 volts in the right places we actually completely power up every single part of this board to the point where it produces audio which we can see here got a little speaker if i turn the signal generator on and see here you've got the class d uh, pulse width modulation happening which is uh, generating a sine wave on the outputs and it's moving on at the speaker here so this this output section is fully functional, albeit only with plus minus 17 volts worth of rail, so not very powerful at this point, but it is functional. Now, if my power supply went up a little higher, say plus minus 30 volts, it, this would still work as well, but you might have to put some heat sinks on the voltage regulators, and I'll explain why in a second. So, where are we injecting our plus minus 17 or plus minus 15 volts at the moment to get this thing to work? Well, very simple. Firstly, you notice that this amplifier needs mm, three or more if you count the bipolars but this thing this amplifier needs three main kind of supply voltages in order to work it needs plus minus rail voltage which is one for the for the uh, speaker to swing between it needs plus minus 15 volts over here to run the driver card and to generate plus minus five volts for the driver card as well and it needs plus 12 volts reference to negative rail for the output drive ICs to work because they are in bootstrap mode so um, yeah they need 12 volts reference to negative rail so there's three separate kind of supplies that this amplifier needs how are we getting that all just from plus minus 17 volts so first thing you want to do is connect up plus minus 17 volts or plus minus 15 plus minus 30 whatever it is you want to go ahead and connect that up to the input pins of your 7815 and 7915 regulators. So obviously, if you're doing this, this is this is all based on a Korean half bridge generic circuit, which these all have. So this is the demonstration for the Korean half bridge circuit. So plus minus 15 volts on your inputs to your 15 volt regulators, okay? And that will then regulate the voltage to plus minus 15 volts, which it already is anyway. So like I say, you could do this with plus minus 20, plus minus 30, um, but just bear in mind, the higher voltage you go, the more these regulators will have to work in order to keep that voltage down at 15. So you might need to whack a little heat sink on them or something like that. So that's the first stage. And doing that will give you plus minus 15 volts for all of the preamp section, for all the op amps in the preamp section. And it will give you the plus 15 volts, which is required for this output driver card style. So that's cool. It also generates the plus minus 
5 volts, which uh, in this board, I think the 5 volt regulators are just hidden under here, but 5 volts is derived from plus minus 15 volts over here. So provided you've got plus, plus minus 15 volts over here, you'll also have plus, five, plus minus 5 volts at the 5 volt regulators as well, which is important for the output card to use. So that's cool. Nice and easy, we're, we're, we're with you so far. Now, with the 12 volts reference to negative rail, how are we getting that from the same supply as what we've got over here? So, for the amplifiers plus and negative rail voltages that the uh, MOSFETs are going to swing between, we are just using the same voltage supplies that come from our supply. In this case, the plus minus 15 volts or plus minus 17 volts, if I crank this up a little bit. So, our rails are plus minus 17 volts. So, negative rail voltage is negative 17, uh, which would be the maximum on this one, negative 17 volts. So the 7812 regulators over here, the 12 volt regs, their ground is tied to negative rail, okay? Because that's how they work. They are generating 12 volts above negative rail. So their ground is tied to negative rail already. So you've got negative 17 on the ground pin of these 7812s. So for the input pin, all you need to do is connect that to ground. And then you will have, in my case here, 15 or 17 volts potential difference between the ground pin of the 7812 and the input pin of the 7812 and therefore the 7812s are going to do their work and they're going to regulate that to 12 volts so these are going to give me 12 volts above the negative 17 which is about plus 2 uh, if you're referencing it to ground so we've got 12 volts above never negative rail just by connecting the input of this to ground to like amp to the main ground which is cool that, that's nice and easy. So now we have 12 volts above negative rail for our drive ICs to work on as well. Uh, and there you have the three supply voltages that this amp requires to get up and running. We have plus minus 17 volts for rail. We have plus minus 15 volts for op amps and the driver card. We have plus minus five volts, which is derived from that for the driver card. And we have plus 12 volts a reference above negative rail for the drive ICs. And that's literally it. Um, you can, as you can see here on the oscilloscope screen, we have the uh, oscilloscope probe. We're probing the um, low side drain, which is gonna give us our class D switch wave, which is just oscillating between 15 volts in, in my example here, which is all working fine. Everything's stay, staying nice and cool. You can probe the, uh, the gate drive as well which looks like that. You can see the gate drive is riding a long negative rail, which is currently at negative 15. And that's, that's riding up to 12 and down to 15. You can see there, that's the 12 volt supply. That's why you need the 12 volts reference negative rail supply, because this drive wave is gonna go, start at negative rail and it's gonna come up to 12 volts above negative rail with the top of this little drive wave here, and then go back down to negative rail. So that's why you need the 12 volts referenced to negative rail. So that's all working good. Um, and yeah, like I say, you've got a sine wave on the output and uh, produces audio. So yeah, technically, if you fed this amplifier with even more voltage, plus minus 30 volts, uh, and you used a, a one ohm load on the speaker terminals, you could actually use this amplifier indoors um, if you had a you know decent high current enough uh, plus minus power supply. You could just use a basic transformer. You could use a basic transformer from the mains you could rectify it uh, with a with a, a bridge rectifier or, or dual dual rectifier, so you end up with plus minus rails from the transformer, plus minus DC. Just use some basic rectifiers, and then you could feed those into the amplifier's rails, the regulator circuit with some heat sinks, and then this would produce audio just fine <laughs> without needing the whole power supply section attached or even up and running or any 12 volt power supplies or anything like that so um yeah i, don't know, I just thought I, this is not planned i have no scripts i have nothing at all i just whacked the camera out because i thought that would be interesting to show you guys if you have any questions on how to get this set up or anything like that just let me know but like i say all you need is a power supply that can generate plus minus I think the absolute bare minimum is going to be about 15 volts, um, any less than that, and the 12 volts above negative rail isn't going to work properly. So, 
you're going to need minimum of plus minus 15 volts plus minus 17 or 20 or 25 is going to be absolutely fine just keep an eye on the voltage regulators in my case they're running really cool barely warming warming up at all because my voltages are so low but you can go a little bit higher on the voltages and um, it will work just fine the only reason that this would ever become a problem is if your rail voltages were so high that the voltage regs just couldn't deal with getting that much voltage down to where it needs to be so yeah hope you enjoyed and uh, i'll see you in the next one